Hello everybody, Jeff Kelly here. Uh, this video is going to be about the Automag serial numbers. And I wanted to start off with the uh, Pasadena numbers first. I have a whole list of those. So if any of you have Pasadena Automags and you want to know when they were made, uh, just send me your email and the uh, number and I'll be glad to send you the sheet on it. However, this set of three automags starts with the North Hollywood uh, because this one, as in my previous video, is a collateral gun where they had given the frame or most of the gun to a person who was loaning them money and it was bought back later and made into a North Hollywood gun. So, uh, this one here happens to have a Pasadena serial number on it. And that serial number is A017-58. The next one is this Pasadena right here and uh, there's the old electro etching and this one has a serial number of A02377 which I will talk about in more detail in the video because I went through and got every serial number that was made on the day that this one was made and the results I'm sure will fascinate you. So there's this one and then the last one here another Pasadena. Uh, there's the markings right there and the serial number on this is A035584 so there's the three guns that I have and we'll go through the Pasadena serial numbers and I uh, if you have any illusions that uh, the uh, Automag builders did these in any particular order, you will be very disappointed. Because if you've got a very low serial number, you might find that it happened maybe uh, in the middle of the bunch. But uh, let's take a look at them. And here they are. The Pasadena serial numbers. Uh, you can see they start with 0001. And there's very few entries on the first page there. But uh, you do have a July 26, 1971 entry. And you have a SORF number here at the top which I can only figure that that is a batch number. So um, the first guns that were assembled were July 26, 1971. I'm going to flip through these pages where I have marked and try and figure out why I marked them. Okay, so here you have more empty uh, serial numbers that Harry liked to use the first hundred for vanity numbers and um, so that's why the first hundred are uh, pretty empty and here's a page here that um, is a good example of the people that sent in their money and uh, made deposits because 
Here's the first date that guns were shipped was this 8371. And this four, I think, is the batch number that a frame, you know, there were three frame builders. So I think that was the batch number so they could tell which builder sent in the frame. And then you had the option, which uh, I'll show you some pictures of later in the video. But the option one was to have your initials put opposite the serial number on the magwell. And then option two was to have that done and then also have your initials or whatever serial number you wanted put on the receiver right above the Made in USA mark and also to have it put on the uh, magazines. So I will show you those later in the video. And um, then here are some examples of lower serial numbers in the 200 range that were made in October. And then you can see that uh, one there, 226, was made in uh, March of 1972. So, uh, there's not much rhyme or reason here. And um, here are some more August numbers. And then you can see right above there uh, with the 289, 290, some November 71 numbers. So, if you thought you had an early one with a 280, nine number uh, you may be mistaken and then you can see there this 308 309 you're looking at two days after they started shipping back in August and then here are uh, some more examples uh, November 71 uh, Yet you can see some September numbers on here uh, as well. And the different batch numbers. This is batch 8 for a lot of them. But they also date back like to batch 4 for that October 1971 uh, number 521. And uh, then here are some early numbers here, 900 numbers, which go into 1972, January of 1972. So you can see it gets even a little more uh, confusing. And then here's numbers in the thousand range that are going into 1972. And there's um, a couple of these numbers from 1972, maybe all of them, that uh, were given as collateral because later on in the video I'll show you the guns that were turned into North Hollywood guns, the Pasadena numbers that were turned into North Hollywood guns. And some of them came off of this uh, page that were built in 1972. And uh, here are some more 1972 serial numbers. But they're all in the thousand range. So another example of how you might be able to uh, uh, think you have an early one, but then again be mistaken. Now here's an interesting page. More 1972 guns, batch number 24, uh, but these empty spots are not filled with any guns because later you'll see that they will draw a line 
if they just want to not write the batch number and the serial number in there. So now we're getting into the area. This here is the first page where they start making guns in order. Uh, so starting in March uh, 2nd, you can see that they're making guns in order. But you see the whole month, month of March is lost because they jump right to April 11th, which is getting very lazy. And I think that they were just trying to uh, make as many guns as possible and not really keeping track. You can see April 11th and April 12th there. And um, more April 12th, like they're really making tons of guns on April 12th. And then uh, <laughs> three pages later, these have 26 guns on them per page. And I don't think they made that many guns on April 12th. But, but uh, here you can see where April 12th ends at 3760. And then you jump two weeks later to uh, April 25th, 1972. And they're just making guns like crazy and not even writing the dates. They're just drawing lines. Uh, uh, you see more lines all on April 25th. And still, that's about four pages there. That's a hundred guns I just flipped through. So uh, you've got another bunch of lines. Now you can see here, that's a notation by Walter Sanford, Harry's son, stating that this 3875 number is the first NH or North Hollywood gun. So uh, that's in his handwriting there. But they continued, I think, to make guns and then it looks like they quit uh, with uh, 3905. Now uh, I, I uh, took a look at uh, the guns that were made on the day that uh, I, I, uh, that one that I have, that 2377 was made and they made 54 guns that day, went through all the serial numbers, every page. And you can see that one day, December 22nd, 1971, they started at serial number 1253 and ended at serial number 3117 for a total of 54 guns. But you could see they were just pulling off of the different lots and uh, really no, no rhyme or reason to um, the order of which they were uh, pulling these frames and stamping them with the serial numbers. Now I counted up all the guns on every page of those and these are the number of guns that were on the page. And the total was 2825. And uh, I counted 19 North Hollywood guns in there where I've seen that are actually North Hollywood guns, which I'll have later on in this video. Um, and it looks like the end was 39. 05 there. So um, let's go on and discuss uh, uh, the North Hollywood serial numbers and uh, I'll look at some the rest of the line. I just wanted to mention the uh, option one and option two uh, from the serial number list. This is option one. You were able to have your initials uh, put in the bottom of the magwell there and um, this is option two 
uh, you had your initials, also the serial number of the gun put on the mag magazines, and um, then also on the uh, side of the receiver that had uh, Made in USA on it. So this was option two, and the uh, first one there was option one. We discussed the Pasadena serial numbers. Now let's take a look at the uh, North Hollywood serial numbers and see how close the uh, powers that be get to those. This is a sheet here of where the serial numbers are supposed to be on uh, these automags. And it says that the North Hollywoods go from 3400 to 5015. And um, let's prove them wrong. So these are the North Hollywood guns that I've seen on the internet. And you can see that the um, collateral guns are down in the 1000 range, 1039 there. And these are the uh, ones that I've seen. There could be ones even lower than that. So I guess uh, they're... Uh, notion that they uh, start at 3400 uh, is wrong and with the notation that uh, Walt Sanford made where the uh, guns are starting at 3875 also makes them wrong so this is what I have on the uh, North Hollywood guns I just wanted to mention the uh, TDE El Monte. Uh, it probably is the least valuable of all the automags. Uh, the serial number range on it was uh, AO5016, which came right after the North Hollywoods, and AO8300. And Lee Juris's were intermingled in those serial numbers, and high standards were intermingled in those serial numbers. Uh, so, uh, but this is the Almaty, and I didn't want to leave them out. In 1974, uh, April of 74 to be exact, high standard wanted to get an exclusive uh, distributorship with uh, the Automag company uh, based in El Monte. At that particular time, Lee Juris also wanted to get an exclusive distributorship. And um, Harry Sanford actually promised Lee the distributorship, but High Standard came in and uh, outbid him. So they were the first to start selling automags without the, um, uh, or with the, a different name on them. And um, they started with the serial number H003 in April of 1974. And finished with H200 um, they produced a hundred and thirty two H serial numbered high standard auto mags and then April 19th 1974 they took on the A numbers that the auto mags were always serialed in and uh, produced another 909 high standard auto mags with the A serial number on them and this was from serial numbers A05278 to A06500 
And then in 1975, there was another round of high standards made from A06600 to A07637. And uh, here's the documentation of that in uh, the book called High Standard Pistols and Revolvers, 1951 to 1984, uh, by James Spacek. Now, of course, the reason they went back to the A numbers is because High Standard uh, gave up its uh, exclusive uh, worldwide distributorship, so they had to go back to use the A uh, serial numbers. And here's the other entry in the book where it references the Automag, and uh, you can see they made both the 44 Magnum uh, or 44 Automag and the uh, 357 Automag, and um, it also references uh, TDE as the uh, manufacturer there. Uh, another quick story on the high standard Automag that they really only uh, are credited with the H numbered high standards, uh, the 132 guns. Harry Sanford uh, made an extra 900 or 1,000 barrels with uh, high standard written on them and sold them with those uh, A serial numbers on them. And when he was marketing them, he didn't want to show the high standard barrel on the gun. So he put uh, the TDE uh, circle, uh, the arrow circle on the other side of the gun, as you can see here in the photograph, and marketed uh, those guns with this picture uh, instead of the picture of the high standard on the barrel or on the receiver. So after High Standard got finished with their uh, uh, distributorship of Automags, uh, Lee Juris got his chance. And uh, you can see on the sheet here that there was a lot of different uh, variations of the Lee uh, Juris Automags, which I will uh, show you uh, some of the electro etchings on those, what they look like. But first, here's a uh, breakdown on how the Lee Juris uh, serial numbers uh, were uh, on the guns when he was putting the LEJ serial numbers on them. Uh, the custom 100s, as you can see, uh, there were a uh, hundred of them made in six and a half inch rib barrel, uh, except for the uh, 80 to 90 uh, serial number, which was an eight and a half non-rib barrel. And uh, the custom 144 um, automag pistol uh, caliber uh, was the same LEJ serial numbers, except they had an X after the, uh, after the number there. And they were uh, uh, made with the rib barrel and then the 80 to 90, those 10 guns were made with the eight and a half inch uh, non-rib barrel. And then uh, the 41 Juris Magnum pistol round uh, caliber gun uh, was, uh, they were supposed to make a hundred of them, but he only made 35. And um, they're marked with the same serial numbers as the uh, custom 100 uh, is except underneath the grip the frame is marked with a uh, 100-3 so that's uh, the way you tell uh, the original frame on the 41 JMP then he also had some specialty uh, silhouette guns that he had uh, made Condor, Backpacker, Alaskan, the Cougar, and thereabouts. Um, he gave up his distributorship because he wasn't selling the volume that he uh, was supposed to sell, but he didn't, um, he wanted to continue to sell auto mags. And uh, the serial number range on the El Monte 
guns was uh, AO 5016 to AO 8300, and the Lee Juris Lionhead uh, guns were worked in there with serial numbers up in the 6000 range and thereabouts. But I'll show you some pictures of the uh, Custom 100 uh, logos and also the Lionhead uh, Lee Juris uh, logos right now. Uh, here is uh, the Custom 144 AMP, and they used to come in a um, leather carrying case, which you can see underneath the gun. They also uh, were magnaported. Uh, the man who ran uh, or who started Magnaport uh, wanted to get some. Uh, publicity and some, uh, you know, uh, credit for uh, his magnaporting. So he asked Lee Juris if he could magnaport his barrels for free. And uh, Lee Juris said, of course you can. And um, so you can see the, the magnaports in these custom 100 barrels. Uh, there's also uh, the bottom of the frame there with the LEJ-12 X signifying the 44 AMP caliber. And here's another custom 100 in 44 AMP. A little uh, closer shot of the um, electro etching uh, with the El Monte address on it. And then here's the serial number on that gun, the LEJ-28X, uh, again signifying the 44 AMP caliber. And here's the 41 JMP caliber. And um, there's the serial number on the bottom of this one, which is, of course, exactly the same as the... Uh, 44 AMP unless you pull the grips off and check the frame for the 100-3. Uh, and here's a 357 AMP. Just to uh, show you what the etching looks like on uh, that one. Now here's one of the A serial number Lee Juris guns uh, with the lion head on it after he lost his uh, exclusive distributorship. And I think that uh, Lee Juris ended his relationship with Automag in 1976. So 74 to 76 is uh, when he was associated with Automag. And here is a Kent Lamont Custom uh, 357 uh, AMP model 160. It had the TDE um, circle arrow logo on it and also his logo on it. Uh, he w used to work with uh, Lee Juris and uh, made a lot of prototype calibers and prototype guns. So there's not a lot of serial number information on that. But um, uh, he did make an automag, so there it is. In 1976, uh, Harry Sanford wanted Ed O'Neill to make him some uh, bicentennial guns, and he wanted a hundred of them made, and here is one of them. Ed O'Neill only uh, made about six of them, and they're really quite, quite rare. They're all polished uh, with that beautiful uh, Liberty Bell logo on there. Uh, and in uh, 357 AMP. Um, here's the serial number on this gun, and I think they go from 200 to 206. I'm not sure, but they're very rare, and they sell for about $30,000 a piece, but they're very beautiful uh, automags. Also around the same time, Bob Babashiewicz, 
uh, did a uh, uh, bicentennial gun, and uh, here it is uh, with one of his barrels on it. And um, there's the uh, Robert Baba Shewitz, uh 1976 serial number on it. So just for honorable mention there. Now here's a custom made uh, auto mag. It's in 45 wind mag. Uh, was made, wait, made by Larry Grossman. Uh, and uh, was sent off to polishing. Took about 40 hours to polish. This was listed on Gunbroker for about $44,000. And the serial number is C00062. But it's a uh, one of a kind. Uh, next up is the TDE OMC guns, but I, before that I wanted to say a couple of words about OMC. I found this article on the backup, the OMC backup in Guns and Ammo, November 75, and I guess you have about a three-month run time before you get an article inside uh, the magazine, and then you might have a six months before uh, the gun's ready to go. So I would say that uh, OMC was probably started by Harry in uh, 1974, late 74, early 75. And he put this new backup gun that he wanted to produce in that DBA. Um, and you can see by the ad there that uh, TDE was just a marketing firm to OMC, which... Um, was Ordnance Manufacturing Corps. Uh, the um, lower right-hand corner there has a picture of the Automag and the backup, and it says Son of Automag. So anyway, I just wanted to preference OMC with when it actually started and that it wasn't really a part of TDE when it did start. Yeah, I just wanted to show you this uh, backup here I found uh, on the internet. Uh, you can see that Harry was using the same serial numbers as he was using on the Automags. The AO3730 had already been used on an Automag. So uh, just kind of a interesting uh, observation there. So let's put this up again and you can see the OMC series was the B series and it had a solid bolt. Um, then comes the C series which they only made a few guns and then the last series which was only 50 guns and that took us up to uh, 1982. Um, but there was a special gun made, which I will, uh, get into after I show you the OMC, uh, gun. Uh, here's TDE OMC. Uh, it obviously, this gun here has a vanity number on it, JC1. But, uh, you can see the TDC, or, sorry, TDE logo, and also... The Ordnance Manufacturing uh, Corp logo on there as well. So on the auto mags, I think Harry, mer you know, merged OMC with TDE, and then he wanted to keep the new backup gun that he had developed uh, separate, and that's why he put it under that OMC umbrella. So I don't have any pictures of the last gun, but uh, the next one is the last I know of um, uh, in 82 uh, being developed. So here we go. So this was August 29th, 1980, when Clint Eastwood sent Harry Sanford this letter thanking him for the uh, automag that Larry Grossman had made up for him. And uh, he was just uh, trying to get a script together uh, to use it in. 
And of course they also made him a uh, another one that shot blanks. So I think that this was the uh, this was Clint one, and um, also this was sent to uh, AMT Corp, which uh, I guess would mean that TDE had uh, gone away and Harry had uh, started Arcadia Machine and Tool from the same address in Almani on McBean. And um, so this went on until 82, and um, uh, that uh, was the end of it. So um, I just want to uh, show you the serial numbers and the guns that I found on uh, the Internet, and uh, that will wrap it up. So thanks for uh, uh, listening. I uh, didn't want to forget anything. Uh, here's the Harry Sanford commemorative. Um, I think there was only about 64 of them made uh, all together. Uh, 30 were made at Galena. And then you had some made in Hesperia. And then you had a few, maybe 30 of them made in, uh, in Sturgis, South Dakota. And that was it. So I uh, just wanted to give them honorable mention. This is number 21. And so here is uh, what I found on the internet. This is every type of auto mag made. Um, and I hope I got most of them, but I, I keep running into the same numbers over and over again. So I think I got uh, the lion's share of them, the, the prices that they were either listed for or sold for, uh, their serial numbers and uh, the date of sale. Uh, did the best I could there. So uh, hope you enjoyed this video and um, if you'd like it, I'd appreciate it. If you'd uh, share it, I'd even appreciate it more. And if you'd subscribe, I'd appreciate it more. Thanks again.